Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Got a funny story. This is the third time I've tried to film this. Uh, every time I start, I, I, I get going, uh, I get a phone call and it shuts the video down. Uh, well, this last time I did it, I got all the way to the end and I was about to uh, do the, the ending thing and I got a phone call. So I've got it on Do Not Disturb now, so I'm going to get it done this time. Hmm. Well, like I said, welcome back to Coffee and the Word. It is October the 7th, and I hope and pray you're all doing well. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, usually I just open the book and start reading. I don't, I don't read ahead to see what it's going, so I get it. So you'll hear me stumble on words and stuff like that. This is the third time I've read it, so I, I should be good this time. So here we go. Uh, as always, may God bless the reading of His Word. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun, the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. For this time forth and forevermore. And the Old Testament lesson this morning. Let me get some coffee. Uh, the Old Testament lesson this morning in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 through 25. And here we go. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that He swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give you, with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant, and when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God you shall fear him you shall serve and by his name you shall swear you shall not go after other gods the gods of the peoples who are around you for the Lord your God is in your midst is a jealous God lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you and he destroy you from the face of the earth you shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massa you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may go well with you, and that you may go in and take possession of the good land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers, by thrusting out all of your enemies from before you, as the Lord has promised. When your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies, and the statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded us, commanded you. Then you shall say to your son, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous, against Egypt and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there, that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give our fathers to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good for our good always, that He might preserve us alive as we are today. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all His commandment before the Lord our God as He has commanded us. The New Testament lesson this morning, we're in the Gospel of Matthew. Got my Cheryl mug. Rick, uh, Rick mentioned this the other day. Got my Cheryl mug. <laughs> the New Testament lesson. It's the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 18 through 38. And while he was saying this th these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, 
a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, for she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went through all that district. And as Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out loud, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows about it. But they went away and spread his fame through all that district. And as they were going away, behold, a demon-oppressed man, who was mute, was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke. And the crowds marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He cast out demons by the prince of demons. And as Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord for the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And this is the word of the Lord. The hymn to this morning. If thou but trust in God to guide thee. It's from, again, it's from the LSB. And for my friends out there and other Facebook places and all that stuff, this is a Lutheran publication. Uh, I'm Lutheran, so that's what I do. Uh, and the hymn to goes like this. Just a few lines this morning. If thou but trust in God to guide thee and hope in him through all thy ways, he'll give thee strength, whatever betide thee, and bear thee through the evil days, who trust in God's unchanging love, builds on rock that naught can move. That's good. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of your people, we give you thanks for your servant, Henry Melchior Mullenberg, who was faithful in the care and nurture of his flock and trusted to his care so they may follow his example and the teaching of his holy life. Give strength to pastors today who shepherd your flock, so that by your grace your people may grow into the fullness of life intended for them in paradise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. As you heard in the prayer, it mentioned a Henry Mel Choir Mullenberg. I believe I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm pronouncing it just like it's spelled. Uh, M-E-L, choir. So, anyway, uh, I'd like to share this with you. <clears throat> Moving from the old world to the new, Henry Melchior Mullenberg established the shape of Lutheran parishes in North America during a 45-year ministry in Pennsylvania. Born in Einbeck, Germany, I think I'm pronouncing that right too, in 1711, he came to the American colonies in 1742. A tireless traveler, Mullenberg helped to found many Lutheran congregations and was the guiding force behind the first Lutheran Synod in North America. The Ministerium of Pennsylvania, founded in 1748. He valued the role of music in Lutheran worship, often, often serving as its own organist, and was also the guiding force in preparing the first American Lutheran liturgy, also in 1748. Mullenberg is remembered as a church leader, a journalist, a liturgist, and above all, a pastor to the congregation in his charge. He died in 1787, leaving behind a large extended family 
and a lasting heritage, American Lutheranism. And that's good stuff. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have just a fantastic day and uh, do whatever makes you happy. Above all, stay safe. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we will see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.